Senator, good to have you on the show. Welcome. Good, good, good morning, uh, Regina, and to all <laughs> watching Bloomberg. Good morning. Let, let's get right yeah. into the numbers, sure. shall we? I know it's a little early, but there's lots to talk about. So the Senate committee has decided to make a few changes to the House yes. version, chief of which is he decided to lower the bar for income taxes, personal income tax exemptions. Meaning to say those earning 150000 annually from now on uh, will be exempt versus yes, the 250000 that the yes. House was proposing. To but be honest, we've, uh, we've kept uh, the exceptions per, for dependents, for which they dependents, did away with. Correct. So if you have more children, you get the full. In effect, you get 250 To be honest, yes. I think uh, there are a few people who are expecting you guys to touch uh, income taxes. What brought this on? Well, the, the, the bill for that is 144 uh, billion pesos, our version. Uh, is a negative re revenue of impact of 112 billion. So, uh, but it still meets the, because I asked them, why are you stuck on the number 250? Uh, it's a lot of uh, easy to collect revenue that you're giving away. And uh, they said, well, that's the campaign promise of the president, uh, where he said 20,000 uh, thereabouts should be exempt. I said, there's a way of doing, there's a way. And, and our version still meets that one, that goal that they, they said. So, uh, in essence, you think 250000 was too high a bar? Well, to give across the board, yes, because uh, people with children would be affected differently. If you have children, you, you will spend more and you deserve, you deserve that tax break. We consulted a lot of uh, uh, economists and they said that's a good practice to, to have it according to uh, the number of dependents. So that effectively means that more than 6 million taxpayers will be exempt given this uh, uh, new tax scheme that you've uh, worked out in the Senate committee. Are you happy with that number? More than 60 80 percent. 80 percent of the taxpayers of the country who were paying, I, th I think you can say they were overpaying for uh, the last decade because tax rates were unchanged for the last two decades. So inflation really ate into their, you had very low income groups like new teachers, new call center agents, you know, just, just new entrants to the workforce, giving away so much of their hard earned money. And by your calculations, this shouldn't dilute the overall revenue projections for no, the DOF? No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. I think uh, the DOF has done work and uh, has, has put together a package that uh, I think, I think we, we stuck to it 80%, and, but we, we made a few changes at the margins. But, but in, in essence, it's still the same package. Yes. Let's talk about one of the yeah. more contentious ones, SSB, Sugar Sweetened Beverage Tax. You changed a few things about that as well. Number yes. one. You <coughs> exempted coffee, both ground and three-in-one coffee. That's that icon right over there. Yes. And then you took down the rate as well. So now, in the first two years, drinks with caloric sweeteners will be taxed at five pesos per liter, while those with non-caloric sweeteners, like, for instance, aspartame, will be taxed at three pesos per liter. Uh, yes. Can you give us a sense of what was the thinking behind this? The thinking was that 10 pesos was too much. That was the rate set uh, in the lower house. And 10 pesos would, in effect, be around 55% if we use a common soft drink, 55% of the retail price per liter. And uh, looking around the systems around the world, uh, that would place us next to Saudi Arabia at the highest rate. But Saudi Arabia has a higher per capita income. So um, what we looked at, what we asked ourselves, what is the best practice around the world? And the studies show that if you raise uh, the price of sugary beverages by around 20%, you already alter behavior. You make people drink healthier beverages. So the five pesos is closer to that uh, 20%. But you know what? This system is uh, rather complicated, to be honest, much more so than the two-tier system that the DOF was proposing. Mm -hmm. How confident are we that we can enforce it the way that it was intended? Because the one, the, this thing that we're looking at is just for the first two years. Yes. Thereafter, you change yes. it again. Well, the ideal would have been, uh, Regina, to just have a sugar content-based. Correct. Meaning you're taxed. Uh, the drink is taxed based on the amount of sugar. But right now, the Food and, the, uh, the food and Drug Authority does not have that, uh, Food and Drug Administration does not have that capacity. So it, it'll take, the two years is for them to build up that capacity. And uh, the rates are initial rates for the first two years. So that's why we have a two-tier or a two, two, uh, two, type of, uh, two types of taxes there. Yeah. When you say the industry doesn't have the capacity to monitor uh, sugar content, do you mean the systems, the processes, the technology? The government. The I government, meant the government has yes, no the FDA, which is the agency of the government tasked to uh, monitor the sugar content and other labeling uh, aspects of, the, of, of food and, and uh, beverages. So now it's, so, so for now at least, it's best to just tax it according to volume. Vo volume per liter is, is, the, is the easier way, but it's, it's less precise, I think, because... Uh, um, you set one level, and if you're above it, you get taxed. If you're below it, you don't get taxed. Whereas uh, a more calibrated version is the, is the sugar content because then you, it's, you're really taxed based on how much sugar 
you have. And then the incentive there is really to, to adjust according to your taxes. I'm guessing you heard a fair amount of complaining from the coffee industry, hence the three-in-one yes, was taken out. Yes, we did. Out. We did because uh, uh, we found out that uh, three-in-one, uh, we originally thought it was a small segment, but apparently uh, the drink, those who drink three-in-one are 80 to 90 percent belong to the CDE uh, market. So, you know, uh, looking at that, <laughs> it's kind of looking at the reality on the ground. It's a bit tough to, to we were accused of, of uh, taxing them based on class, you know, so. I think that's something we, we looked at. The complaint uh, was that a lot of the products that you can buy at the Sari Sari store will be impacted. Yes, three-in-one is a very popular product. And of course, we didn't want to touch milk as well because uh, uh, if you look at the, the uh, statistics on our children, a lot of them are stunted, a lot of them are undernourished. So, you know, it didn't make sense to... to it would, we would be at a crosshairs policy-wise. Senator, sugar taxes, as you pointed out, the world over are oftentimes unpopular, although sometimes necessary. Um, as you guys were debating the SSB, how much weight did you put into this as uh, behind the idea of this be a health measure? I mean, I was talking to Secretary Sonny Dominguez about it, and even he says this isn't so much about the revenue as it is about trying to cultivate a healthier lifestyle for Filipinos. That's true. I think in setting the level of the tax, the DOF deferred to the Department of Health. And it was largely the Department of Health and a lot of these uh, health NGOs who were pushing for this tax. Um, let's talk about uh, fuel excise taxes now. Another contentious point. Uh, why was there a need to change this, given that the Banco Central itself <coughs> had said that the inflationary impact on uh, higher excise taxes on fuel would be manageable? Well, as you know, fuel tax can, can be passed on to the consumer. So although the statutory incidence or who pays it under the law is, are the oil, the fuel companies, they just pass it on in practice. So uh, we thought a 175, 2 peso, 225 phased out over three years would be more um, uh, easier to bear uh, from the part of the lower income sectors of society. And uh, also the cash transfer systems that uh, the government planned to sort of counter uh, the negative effects of this would not be in place in the first year. So you have a three, if you have a three peso, uh, fuel tax that takes effect right away, but your transfer system is not in place right then, then you have a problem. So uh, where did this uh, calculation come about? So you, the Senate version is proposing 175 first year, yeah. two pesos, and then finally 225 in the third year. Well, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of consultation. A lot of people appeared in the hearings. And, e and surprisingly, even the Department of Social Welfare and Development, which is the department tasked to oversee the poor, they, they recommended the lower rate. The argument, though, from the finance department as well as the various economists that we've spoken to is, number one, we haven't changed the uh, fuel excise rates in 20 years. And number two, if you're going to change it, you might as well do it when the economy is doing well, yes. which it is right now. Isn't there a sense right now that by diluting it to this level that you might just be prolonging the pain? Uh, well, we agree with everything you said. It hasn't been changed in a while. And when now that the, there's a, we're in a lower... Uh, uh, pump price regime, it's a good time to do it. And if you look at the numbers, it's just a question of detail. The end result is the same after three years. The numbers should add up. They, they, it, you get the same amount after three years. Yeah. Um, there's also a provision in there that says the fuel excise uh, hikes will be suspended if Dubai crude hits $80 That's a right. barrel. Um, and actually, also, also a, if a provision inflation. if inflation, if it hits the upper end of the target. What we're seeing though right now is that we're pretty far off from that uh, yeah. world. A WTI crude is sitting just above 52, whereas Brent is just above $57. Uh, how do we come up with an $80 a barrel ceiling? Well, we, it's actually from the Department of Finance uh, and, and uh, some other members of the Senate. They said it's good to place a ceiling since we're in a low price regime. So there's some kind of safety net for lower income earners as well. So they're not too uh, worried that we might hit that anytime soon, are they? Well, I, I think the, the six-year prognosis or prediction is around a maximum of 65 per barrel. So well, it is inching up. Yeah. Um, mm. Let's talk about uh, <coughs> auto taxes now. The other, I'm sorry, I'm barreling through one after no, the other no, no, because no worries, we're no worries, running yes. out of time. But uh, when it comes to taxes, when it comes to cars, rather, the Senate's revisions were more minor. You both generally agree that you need to tax the volume models less and the luxury models a lot higher. Yes. Your rates for the luxury tax, uh, luxury cars, though, are a lot higher than the house versions. Tell me what went into this uh, thinking. Well, the house had a two-year, uh, two-tier two over two years, meaning they had a first year and they had a second year. What we did, because uh, those the car manufacturers who appeared before us, they said we'd prefer a one-year. Uh, so what we did is we just went for the midpoint of the first two years of uh, 
of the house version, and that's and this that's is the, the simple midpoint. calculation. Yes. Okay, but within the first, uh, they didn't have this provision though. Upwards of 3.1 million pesos, you'd have to pay 1.65 million pesos, plus 100 percent of excess over 3.1 million pesos. Actually, the house uh, inserted that, and uh, I think they, the house is the one who moved to a fifth uh, tier. It's the DOF version that maintained the existing four tiers. Is there a worry that this might hurt the auto manufacturing industry, precisely at a time when we're trying to become an auto manufacturing powerhouse in the region uh, to rival, for instance, Thailand? Yes, that's why, that's why it's a little bit more moderate compared to the original DOF proposals. Uh, and also, um, we asked about the effect on the CARS program of the government, and they said that's not going to be touched. Uh, so we're still going to be giving the uh, subsidies to certain models so we attract the whole uh, value chain here to the country. Um, and, uh, and of course, you have to look at the car sales over the last few years. I think in the first quarter of 2017, we sold more, almost double. It was a record amount. Almost double of what we sold in the first quarter of 2014. So clearly, it's a fast growing segment. And uh, I think you know, it, it's, it's, going to, it's going to be uh, compensated by the amount, uh, the generous amounts or tax breaks we're giving out. Is there a sense that this is needed to help curb traffic? Well, they mentioned that, but honestly, I don't know if it's going to do that because uh, the, the options regarding public transportation aren't exactly that great either. So. That's right, which we'll talk about another day. Senator Angara, this is JP down in the newsroom. I just wanted to jump in with a question um, that the markets actually wanted me to posit to you guys. Um, one of the more interesting revisions made at the, uh, with, the, with the Senate uh, proposal was to raise the taxes on some financial transactions, such That's as right. dividend taxes going up to 20%. Taxes on uh, on uh, on capital gains for unlisted stocks up to twenty percent. Um, these were I, I, what some of the analysts I, I talked to about these taxes were a little mixed with regards to how it might impact capital markets here. I wanted to just get a better understanding of what went into uh, Senate's decision to uh, behind this particular proposal. Well, this is the initial proposal of the committee, uh, uh, JP. No, uh, so we're still at the stage of Senate deliberations on the floor. So. Other senators will still have a chance to scrutinize these proposals. But the thinking really is that uh, we wanted the tax burden to be evenly distributed. And of course, the DOF set some very strict uh, revenue goals. So um, when we uh, moderated some of the other taxes, we had to find ways to, to meet the revenue goals of the government or the Department of Finance. And uh, if you look at the, uh, on whom the burden falls for these capital income taxes, they're largely on the upper income groups. And of course, we made an effort not to touch uh, the listed, uh, the taxes on listed uh, on the markets because we want to remain competitive. Um, that is one uh, issue that was brought up when I was talking to President, PSC President Ramon Monson. He does believe that these friction costs might actually um, uh, be a burden on people trying to uh, come into the capital markets. Um, could this actually deter any efforts to, uh, to create a more inclusion or encourage people to come into the capital markets later on? Well, the capital market is highly ex exclusive as of now. It's less than one half of one percent. So. I mean, the argument for, for a lower uh, trans stock transaction tax was that you wanted to attract more, but it hasn't really had that effect over the years. But if you look at how other countries in the region tax um, the capital income taxes we mentioned, they tax them at even higher rates and not at flat rates. They, they usually tax them depending on what you pay or a corporation would pay. If you're in the 30% income tax bracket, then your dividend income also is subjected to that tax. So ours is quite moderate if you look uh, around the region. So it's a tax scheme for the greater good is what you're trying to say? Well, yes. I think, I think uh, uh, um, it's a package. You have to look at it in, in total and, and on whom the burden falls. And I think uh, all in all taken together, you know, we welcome any comments uh, that, 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 that might be seen uh, uh, if they're seen to be uh, on the negative side. But we're, we're welcome to all these comments. Well, for that matter, what have our friends at the DOF said about this particular version? I mean, obviously, they were hoping that this package will be passed in full. Well, they're heavily invested in their own version, of course, uh, I think, as you can imagine, Regina. So uh, there's still some uh, de internal debates going on. And, and I think that's the process. That's the democratic process. On what process. particular provision? I think on the fuel, they're still trying to push it. Uh, they want more in the first year. So a um, little debates, a few debates going on. So out of all the provisions, new provisions that you've introduced, which ones are you most willing to compromise on? I mean, when the horse trading begins, which ones would you see down I, on? I, I would wait till I hear from the other senators because so far, I've heard from the committee members and not all the senators. Now we're in the period of plenary debates. So, so I would like this to hear their inputs and then maybe talk about it as a package. Yeah. Well, as far as the timeline goes, how confident are you that uh, this can be passed within the end, year end? Initially, the target was, in fact, October. 
which is well, we're available easy. every day for interpolations. <laughs> um, sometimes senators are ready to ask questions. Sometimes they say they're still preparing. So uh, the process continues. What's a realistic date in your mind? Um, maybe December, January, I think, is, 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 is doable. Yeah. December passed by, signed by December, uh, passed into law by mm. January? Yeah, yes. Uh, of course, it depends on all the moving parts, uh, moving quickly. Yeah, but we keep talking yeah. to the DOF as well, and they themselves are fairly confident this will get passed in on schedule. Well, that's good. That's good. Confidence is good. <laughs> <laughs> was there, as you were, uh, you know, doing your deliberations, was there an effort to look into other sources of revenues? For instance, uh, the mining industry, which President Duterte himself yes. has said he wants to tax more, or uh, the gaming industry, which mm -hmm. is seeing tremendous growth right now. The gaming, we had a, we looked at a, uh, a casino entrance fee, but the administration was seen to be a bit of a problem and a, and a bit of a damper. And since uh, uh, the new entrance and entertainment or Pagcor City, uh, the deal was that they would pay a lump sum in lieu of all taxes. So we're still looking at that one. For the mining, they, the DOF said that's in package five. So we're waiting for them to present that to us. Uh, other sources we also looked at. We, we looked at taxing plastic. Um, we looked at uh, a travel tax, a tax on tourists, but then those were sort of uh, put unpopular. back on the drawing board for uh, further study. Because they were unpopular? Well, some, there were certain objectors. Uh, some said um, putting a tax on tourists would be sending the wrong message. Uh, some said the tax on plastics, we had to figure out how to administer that. Although I think I'm convinced in theory that we could make a levy work. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a question of, uh, of administration and how to, what's the best way to administer the tax. What about more taxes on SIN products? I mean, there's uh, still an ongoing debate about the unitary versus two-tiered uh, tax system on cigarette products, for instance, That's right. how useful it's been. That's right. The House passed a bill to move back to the unitary, to the, to the two-tier, uh, where this is the first year of the unitary. And uh, we heard some of the advocates, former health secretaries, who are pushing very hard for a, a new round of uh, cigarette tax increases. And their claim is that we can raise 68 billion by doubling the unitary tax, which is at 31 pesos per, tax, per pack of cigarettes now. Um, looking at the figures, I'm not so sure if we can do that because in 2015, we earned 100 billion from cigarette tax collections, up dramatically from 70 billion the previous year, up dramatically from 36 billion the previous year. But in 2016, finally, it nosedived to 94 billion. So, I mean, the DOF has said they'd like to see a full, years of, a full year's worth of revenue to see where the trend is going. And, and I think they're on the right track because you have to know if you touch something, you, because the, the SIN tax law of 2012 struck a delicate balance between health and revenue. And, and the revenue you get from the SIN tax goes towards funding PhilHealth. That's why in the last few years, you've seen a dramatic increase in the enrollment of PhilHealth uh, to almost 90%, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. No? So you touch that. And then you imperil some of the programs that are funded by that. At the same time, if you, um, if you raise it too far, then, then you may affect that balance. So generally speaking, a unitary tax system is still the better way to go? Well, if we look at the experience of the past few years, there's, a lot, there, there, there were, there's information that there was a lot of gaming of the system. It gave rise to a lot of illicit uh, trade. So I think, I think a unitary... Uh, right now seems to be the one that makes sense. And lastly, let me close off on some more numbers, Senator. CTRP revenues or train revenues for year one. Uh, can you confirm this number for me? 134 billion pesos in revenues is the, what the Senate version is proposing. Yes, from the last figures given to us, we're in this region. Yeah. Is 134 accurate at this stage? About 130, 134, yes. Okay, despite all of the income tax cuts as well as the fuel excise Well, don't forget cuts. our income tax cut is lower. So we're giving away less revenue there. And uh, uh, some of the revenues largely maintained from the DOF version. And overall, there will be enough money to keep uh, supporting the government's well, we'll make sure uh, cash that. transfer program. We'll, we'll make sure of that because uh, that, that's the point of the whole package. Fantastic insights. We're going to have to leave it there. Senator Sunny Angar, Chair of the Senate Committee, Senate Ways and Means Committee, I should say. Thanks very much Thank for your you, time Regina. today. Thank we you, Regina. Thank you for it. having me. Yeah.